So uh, last week we didn't record the meeting, but we did talk for 45 minutes to an hour. And one of the things I was telling Al is that I've got these uh, current sensors you can buy on Amazon. This is the way I wired mine up. It comes as a little, just a little board, which uh, I thought I had to lay in here. I guess I lost it. Anyway, it's just, here's here's the, the other version. This is, um, I think this one's rated either 20 or 25 amps. And this, this is the way it comes. So it's just a board with some connectors on. And I see my connectors transparent today. But anyway, it's got a, some, here, let me turn that off. How do I do that? Do that? Turn it off. None? Okay, there we go. So it's a, just a little board. It's got some screw terminals on it. And uh, it could be when it comes that the screw terminals aren't soldered on, You could, but you can solder that onto, your, onto the board. I just, I just got pins at the other end to hook up your little jump rope leads. And this particular one, as, as I say, I think they're rated at 20 or 25 amps. But this particular part number, and this is a GY712. I'm going to say the trick was I have to do that. I have to get something behind it to get this to focus. <laughs> I was going to grab my other camera this morning so I could put it on the table, but I can't find the camera, so I, I didn't do that. So anyway, the part number is GY712 on this one, and there's various ones that have that 712 part number. That's the, the number of the chip itself. And basically, you just put on... Uh, uh, on, on the chip, you just put on power and ground, and it's got an analog output signal. And the, the voltage coming out is just proportional to the current. And then you've got this one, the bigger one. It's got these big, giant, uh, it's got this big, giant IC like this. That's uh, It's got three three leads on it, and it's got two two giant power connectors coming out. They're big, big, heavy tabs. And they just put that on a board and... Here's the back of the board. And again, where's my where's my paper? So on the back of the board, it just has you can see the two big where it says IP plus and IP minus. That's the, the two main power leads coming in, and it's uh, got some fairly hefty uh, traces on that. Somebody was saying that's only good for like thirty amps, even though the the board's rated plus and minus fifty amps, and that. SOIC chip on there. That's an op amp. They just buffer the output, so it, so it, uh, it it's a benefit if depending on what you're gonna hook it up to. And on the top of the board, it just got the. Uh, well, even this isn't gonna work. <laughs> so anyway, it's just got the big chip on the top, and then it's got the the four four leads coming off one end. So it's got your power and ground, and then the direct output from the chip and a buffered output from the chip, and. The other thing is I found some heat shrink tubing. It's clear heat shrink tubing. And so I quite a convenient piece here. So it just it's just like a regular heat shrink tubing, but it's clear. So you can put that on. And I put several layers on here. So I put on um first of all, I put I put a, a strip on here, and then I put another strip up to, to to hold that on, and I put a big, big one over the top of the whole thing. So if you get the kit that's got, you know, it's got like six or seven different sizes on, you can just cut the pieces and then heat shrink it on there. And number one, that that protects it, so you're not going to short it out to anything. And then secondly, since there's an LED on the board somewhere, I forgot where the LED, maybe it's on the back. Anyway, there's an LED on there somewhere, and with the clear heat shrink tubing, that, that way you, you can see it. And one of the biggest problems I always have is, you know, I soldered four four different wires coming in, and I, I never know where those go. If you cover it up with heat shrink, you can't tell where they go. But if you get clear heat shrink, you can see the board and you can see where the, say in this case the the yellow and the green one. I can see where they're hooked up on the, on the board. So that that was handy to do that. So I, I was I was pointing out that I I had done that and that will measure. You can either measure AC or DC current with it because it just simply gives you, whatever the instantaneous current is. So if you put in a AC, it it varies around your your zero point so you you can use it for either if you want to and then another project i was working on which has nothing to do with robots but um i was trying to, trying to figure out on my furnace trying to measure the current because i wanted to have a, a 
say a gas power generator on the front yard or get a power inverter and either run it off a battery on the floor or other people will put the power inverter in their car. Mm -hmm. So they just run an extension cord out. So you've got a, instead of buying a generator, basically your, your car engine and your inverter form a, form a generator for you. And then it turns out you can buy these in order. I, I wanted to measure the current on my furnace to know what the startup current is, to know how big a generator I would need or how big an inverter I need. So you can buy these. Uh, I don't remember what I paid for this. This is I bought this years ago uh, when I was going to do a whole house power monitor. And basically it's got a big enough lead in here. You can get that. That'll go around. I'd, I'd have to look and see to see if that fits on my, my main cables coming in. I bought these and then I opened up my fuse box and it's just a little tiny fuse box and there's not enough room in there to, to put these on, uh, on the main power leads coming in and the power leads would be live because the only way to turn it off, you have to pull the power meter off the side of the house and they've got a seal on that. So if you cut the seal and pull it off, then they accuse you of stealing power. So, so I, I didn't get around to doing that and decided there wasn't room anyway, but this particular one is rated at 100 amps and 50 milliamps, which means if you push 100 amps, so you've got a single conductor here and you push that through, well, here it will, my finger won't fit. So so basically here's your main, one of your two main phases coming in from the, the outside. So you clip this on there and then whatever current's running through, running running through this wire like this, it generates coming out the bottom. It's got the little, uh, it's just got a little a cable coming off with a little like headphone jack on the end of it. So it's so based on what it says there, it says uh, 100 amps and 50 milliamps, which means if I push in 100, 100 amps through the main cable, then this thing out here will generate a current of 50 milliamps. So in order to get, convert that into a voltage, you just put a resistor across that, and then you get a voltage coming out of it. And I, I already had these, and I thought I could use them, but then I was looking on Amazon, and you can also get this one, which is, it, it looks identical except... The number here, the number here says 30 amps slash one volt. So what that means is if you're you got a wire that's got 30 amps going through it this way, going going through it this way, then the voltage coming off here or the coming out of here actually gives you a voltage. It's got a the built in what they call a burden burden resistor, and it's just simply a resistor across the coil. And if you, so, as you push current, as the thing pushes current through here then the resistor converts that to a voltage. So theoretically, if I run 30 amps this way, I will get one volt AC coming off this connector here. So I got that and decided I could just go hook that up to my furnace and, and watch the watch it running and see what it's doing. And back when I started doing my whole house power system, I, I got far enough. I took this proto board and put a bracket on it. And I've got two coaxial connectors and two headphone connectors. And then also I've got picked up a little uh, wall wart that says uh, it's 12 volts at um, 12 volts AC is what it puts out. So you just plug it in an outlet and I can get then 12 volts AC coming off the connector there. So that was, that was one of the things that was going to plug into here. And then the uh, other one was take, take one of these and that plugs into one of the other connectors on there. And I had it set up. I, I had it set up for dual channel because I was going to measure both phases of the power coming into my house. But when I decided I didn't have room to put those in, I didn't want to screw around with the power that was live, I gave up on that. So now I'm at the point where if I just take that transformer, open my furnace and clip it on the hot lead, and then plug my little uh, transformer in the wall, I can get both the AC voltage and the AC current and just put it on my oscilloscope. So my oscilloscope, oscilloscope will show me what's going on, and it's a digital scope, so I can actually you know store a waveform so I can say load it up and set the current trigger or set the trigger to be at about what the five amp level would be and then as the furnace runs as the main main blower comes on it should capture you know give me a give me a startup waveform looks like that and i can go measure how high that is and how wide that is and then try to make some guess as to whether or not a, a gas powered generator will put up with that or if it's or what it's going to do with it. it it seems like that startup should be short enough the you know the the generator will probably complain but i don't know if it's going to slow down enough to to be a problem or not and so anyway that that's what i've been doing the last week is just researching all that stuff and i'm at the point now where if i pull out a screwdriver and tear my furnace apart i could actually go measure that and i guess the only other thing i've been doing is i again i i'm to the point where 
I, I can't find anything and I got stuff piled up. So I actually started, I started carrying boxes upstairs and I started with box. I had like four or five boxes of cables. So I took all those and sorted them out. So I've now got a big cardboard box full of serial cables, one full of video cables and one with, uh, I can't remember what the other one's. One, one's got just a small box of ethernet cables or a box of USB cables. So, you know, if I take everything in the house and sort it into boxes like that, I'll be further ahead than I'm where I am right now. Because as I say, I was going to get my other camera out to look at stuff on the table. But of course, I can't find it. You know, I had it a couple of weeks ago, but now I can't find it. So it's, it's in some random box here. So I, that's probably going to be the best thing I can do is sort all my crap out and start throwing stuff away. And then hopefully I'll know where to go if I want a camera or I want, you know, a power cord or, oh, the other thing, I got a big box of power cords too that came out of the cables on that stuff. So that. That's kind of kind of where my life is right now and kind of what I'm doing. So I guess I'm not actually doing any robot stuff right now. So I'll turn it over to Al. Can you show how that clip opens up? So it's just got a, uh, it, it looks like that and you just simply go like that and it's just got a dual, a split core inside of there. So you just put it over your wire and then close it. So Let's see, here's a, we'll pretend this is the wire. We'll pretend this is the wire I want to sample. So you just open it like that. You put it in like that and it just snaps back on. And there you go. That should measure, that should measure that. All and the other. Wire through, not both the black and white, correct? You, you, can, you can only put one wire through it. Because if you put both through it, that cancels out to zero. So that doesn't work. And the other thing I was looking at was, in this whole thing, I was looking at those clamp meters. You can buy a meter that's got a big clamp on the end of it. You just clamp it around a wire. And that turned out to be a, a whole, uh, a black hole of of trying to figure out how that stuff works. And it, it's not as straightforward as somebody might think. And so that was the other thing that, you know, this basically, um, those you can just clip it around one wire. And it, it seems like it, it would, you know, just the proximity to the other wire would screw it up. But it Nobody has mentioned that. They just say, you know, if you take a power cord and strip back the insulation, so you got three wires there, they just clamp it around one of the, either the black wire or the white wire. And, you know, either one of those will give you the current. So and that's that's kind of kind of where I'm at. I haven't actually fired it up and done anything yet, but but look at the clamp meters and to get one that measures inrush current, they want, they, they started like $60, whereas you can get a cheap one that doesn't measure that for like $30. But and then somebody else will say, oh, well, depending on which one you buy, some of them, the, the inrush current will be reported in RMS or it'll be reported in peak or it's going to average some stuff or it's going to do a max and a min. So it looks like you, you can't trust it anyway. So I thought, well, I'll set up, I'll just put my own transformer on there and look at it on my scope and that should give me, you know, I can actually analyze what's going on there and see what's happening. So that's where that's at. Careful of those hot wires. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's why I haven't done anything with it because I didn't want to play with those. <laughs> and what's the nightly low in Minneapolis? I don't think you want to mess up your freezer, uh, your furnace. Uh, well, it's still getting below freezing. Yeah, that's something else that occurred to me is that I I got to be careful. And the other problem is since since I rent this place, if I blow up a fifteen hundred dollar furnace, they're they're going to be upset, and I'm going to have to pay for that. So. That's another thing I have to be careful of is trying to decide if that's worth worth doing or not. Anyway, on my side, let's turn on sharing here. Um, I posted a video. I don't know if, I, if this will play. I downloaded it too, so bear with me. Let me just pull it off my download. Might be better. La, 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 la. Well, I thought I downloaded it. Which 
Come on. Holy cow, that was a really short video. It's 500 megabytes. I'm not getting any sound. Why is that? Well, can you hear me still, Jeff? Yeah, I can hear you. And my my video is never the sound never comes through, but that's good because if you play a video, it's got uh, got a song on it, then YouTube jumps on you and threatens to kick you off for copyright violations. So I just leave mm -hmm. mine. I I didn't bother to figure out how to get mine to play like that. Seems to be playing, but not at the right speed. So I'm assuming I'm just maxed out on CPU on this smaller machine here. So anyway, I'll just describe what's going on. So this is a um, lawn tractor I happen to have in Texas. I hadn't spent any time with it in a long time, but I'm trying to get back after it. I fabricated, the video will repeat all this, but I fabricated a couple of, um, actually four 18 inch, one and a, I think one and a half inch, by three sixteenth strips. I've chosen them as opposed to having something welded to the frame, just clamp them to the frame with a couple of other um, pieces of the same material. And the notion is I'm going to put my electronics board here, and then I've got another set to put on the other side um, to do the same thing. I'm sure that'll give me plenty of real estate, so I might. Um, put the lithium battery on the other side and put the other electronics on this side. And I can see the video is going to bounce around here a little bit. Um, let's see, can I fast forward? Oh, here, we'll pause it here. And so in addition, yeah, I press pause. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you get when you have a slow computer. Store that with you a little bit more. Uh, this is like hunting and pecking. So I mounted the steering control molder. Again, this is one of those Saturn View. Um, some people call them electric pumps, but Bottom line is it's for electric steering control in uh, General Motors vehicle. And there's an output shaft on that, as you would expect. And there's a U-joint here. You got that uh, light bulb? <laughs> Do I hear you, Jeff? No, Bob, Bob has joined, and that was somebody in his house talking because he had, had oh, his hey, Bob. mic unmuted. Um, so this U joint, this U joint is going to connect the original drive shaft, which I had to cut off. Um, and that, I mean, I, my fabricating skills are a little bit limited, so that's like you know, measure twice, cut once. Well, I was sort of measure 20 times and cut once. Um, so that fits up in there nicely. And then you can't see it in this particular frame, but uh, the motor mount. there's a bolt. I had to drill through the U-bolt and the shaft to join those up. And it's a high tensile bolt because I've um, broken those before. There's another view of it. And when my slow computer keeps running, it'll give you another view. So the next thing is to mount a board there and start mounting the electronics. The first piece would be the uh, steering control board for me. And then ultimately this white thing is, as you might guess, the gas tank. And I was thinking of running another strip up here and putting that on there. This is a gravity fed 
a system different than the one I have in Pennsylvania, which is a fuel injection. So I've got to get it up above, you know, the carburetor. So anyway, that's a little bit about what's going on here. Let me stop this. Um, and there's sort of an overview of what the thing looks like. I have um, as well started, let's see, let me put that there. I, I, dang, I didn't know I was do that. Um, it's already had it open. You know, you have a lot of tools to use and one of them that I happen to use is one note and it's really just for taking some quick notes. And so I started to sort of step-by-step step keep track of everything that I'm doing with this particular build. It's a picture of the steering motor for like a, <laughs> talk about inflation. I think the price of these things has gone up twice. Um, this is a U-joint. There's a spline on one end and it's smooth on the other to get the original steering shaft. It's made by this company, Sweet Manufacturing, Kalamazoo. Uh, and that's about 50 or $60. And then this is a picture of the motor mount without the motor there, just the shaft there. And I ended up cutting it to 99 millimeters. Gave me a little bit of flex in the new joint, which is useful, but it's really, um, yeah, that, you screw that cut up, you buy another steering shaft. The long bolt to connect the steering motor to the motor mount, the high tensile bolt, McMaster car is wonderful, or McMaster. Uh, that's the only notes that I've gotten so far. So that's where I'm at. I haven't gotten a reply back uh, on my GPS issue. My uh, older ComNav GPS sent a note requesting some help. It was Chinese New Year, hadn't heard back, still haven't heard back. So I pestered them again. We'll see. Uh, see if they ever reply. That's what's going on here. Okay, Bob, over to you. Show us your wonderful, you know, everything's done, everything's fixed. You know how to do all this stuff. <laughs> um, everything here is on hold because we just signed a purchase agreement. So now we're downsizing and cleaning out and uh, I've ordered a bunch of parts, but I haven't had a chance to look at them yet because we're boxing things up and again, moving stuff off the place. That sounds like a hectic time. Oh, it is. It's Luckily, we've got until November. Uh, purchase agreement says that we can live here, uh, we can rent back and exchange for my uh, Mahindra tractor. So I won't need it where we're gonna move in. Probably the biggest thing, and even a, like one of your machines might be a little too big for our place. Well, we'll see. I'm still thinking about some kind of a century or, or uh, see something like that. Um, I did get the Raspberry Pi 5 because I wanted to look at the two micro HDMI connectors. And I've got some things coming so I can hook up to my seven inch uh, display. Um, but that's about it. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to do anything actually, <laughs> just cleaning stuff out. Found a guy that'll take scrap iron, so we'll get a get rid of a lot of stuff, but that's where I'm at. Any 
Anything else, Jeff? Uh, nothing that needs to be recorded, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I, so I'll 